towards towards today, everything has just been God's love, God's love. Uh, I just started understanding myself. God has just been so loving. My academic, my finance. Honestly, I was I was into pieces. But God, God was just faithful. He was like, there's this promise I always get from God. Before one will finish, you provide the boom. My parents have been amazing. They fell sick, they came back. I don't know how. At times in class, some stuff, I just, I don't even know how I remember them. I just remember it's God's love. I just want to tell someone that he paid the price for you. He paid the price for you. He loves you so much. Just imagine a father giving his only son. Imagine your dad giving you, your, you're the only child. Imagine. And talk more of God. He loves you so much. He loves you so, so much. There's nothing that can separate you from God, honestly. Just think about it. The sin. Sin cannot separate you from God. Just tell God how much you love him. Praise God. I want to testify to the glory of God for, you know, his awesomeness. When we are singing the song, SS Love, I just reflected back, you know, what God did for me from first year. Okay, when I was in third year, there was, you know, something I wanted to do something. I was supposed to go somewhere. But, you know, to me, everything looked all planned out and everything looked all, all good. And, you know, there, it was like the devil just... It was not the will of God, actually, but because of the way I was feeling, I assumed that it was the will of God. You know, I followed my feeling instead of praying. I didn't pray. I prayed, but I didn't pray much. I didn't hear, like, or get any confirmation from God concerning it. But thank God that God helped me. I know that place I wanted to go to. You know, it was hindered, and I didn't go. It was later, you know, this year, I was now reflecting again. I was like, ah, God, I thank you that... I, I didn't go to that place I was supposed to go to. So but I just want to thank God that, you know, he, you know, the Bible says he sees the end from the very beginning. So he has already seen the end. I might be seeing maybe the circumstances that are surrounding me or the things that are happening presently, but God already sees the end. He already knows, like, what is going to happen at the end. So but I just want to thank him that he never allowed me to take that step. I want to thank him for his excess love upon my life upon my family, you know, in every aspect of my life, he had been so good for the transformation in my life, in every aspect, my spiritual life, you know, physically, in every aspect, I just want to give him all the glory, may his name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. I think the drama um, ministry, administration, sorry, dance ministry, I'm ready to drama, <laughs> the, the dance ministry have presentation for us this morning, and I'll also you know, i want us quickly to you know greet people not standing up greeting everybody in the church but like greet one or two people close to you tell them you are welcome into the house of god 
Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet. Let's be on our feet quickly, please. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory and all the praise. We thank you, Lord, for this time, oh God, being in your house. We thank you, Lord, for your word that we are about to receive this morning. We ask, God, that you open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, and we open up our minds, that nothing will cause distraction in your presence this morning. Help us to focus, oh God, King of glory, on what you have for us this morning. Let us not be distracted by the things around us, by the people around us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be attentive to your word, oh God, and go back home, oh God. Lord, filled with your word this morning, we thank you for your verse that you are going to be using this morning to bless our lives, oh God. That, Lord, your word is coming through her to us, oh God, this morning as it is, as you have given it to her, oh God. Let your word, oh God, you know, minister into our life. Let your word edify us. Let your word strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus. Be that glorified even now and forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise and worship. Please come up on stage. You are going to give us the offering now. God bless you. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We are not happy we are giving our offerings. Oh, some of us used to sneak out of church before the service ends, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet. You are good and you're my seed forever. Hallelujah. Oh, you are good and you're my seed forever. We thank you for blessing us out of the abundance you have brought us little. Lord, we pray you receive it in the name of Jesus. And as we sit down to receive your word, Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray you, teach us. Speak to our spirits. And may you alone be glorified in everything. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, announcements on Saturday, 16th of February by 6 p.m. We are going to be having worship night here. Is that the brother is happy? I'm happy. And <laughs> the theme of the worship night is overwhelming love. And we're going to be experiencing the love of God full time here that day. This is a place to be. Don't go and gyrate. And there's no cell meeting that day. We're going to be having our cell meeting here on Friday. So please come with your cell group members. No excuses. Because the time is the time where all cell meetings start. 
and it ends when all cell meeting ends. So you don't have any excuse for not coming. Praise the Lord. So invite someone to also come and experience God's love. Hallelujah. Please, I would like it if we move forward. There are spaces. Let us just occupy the space in front. Please, quickly, let's not take too much time. We don't have time. Let's move forward, please. Please, if you know the just move forward. There are spaces in front of you. Move forward. God bless you. Yes, sir. Move forward. You want me to call your name, Izu? Move forward. Praise the Lord. All right, today we're going to be talking about a very powerful topic. It's just that we don't have so much time, but I would like to cover the topic as much as I can. So I need your full attention. We're going to be talking on strengthening. What did I say? Strengthening, that's the theme of the year, right? And we know the meaning of strengthening. We understand what it means to be strengthened. But strengthening true or by fulfilling the will of God. When Beverly was giving her testimony, I was like, why is this girl chipping into the message today? Strengthening by fulfilling what? The will of God. True fulfilling God's will. Now, I'm going to go through certain things first before we go to the points. So, please, I think these things are actually very, very, much, very, very important. Because I got a revelation about a lot of things this morning whilst I was studying this verse. And I think I just want to share it out with you. First of all, open your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2. Quickly, quickly, please. Genesis 2 from verse. Egaite, are you with me? Okay. Genesis 2 from verse 15. Now, what does it mean to have a will? Power. Will can be equated to what? Power. The power to do and not to do. Praise the Lord. The power to do what? Do and not what? To do. So it's a decision making what? Power. A will. Now, when you say somebody's will is being controlled, what do you mean? It means that person is submitting to the person controlling that person. Do you understand? It's like if you say, my will is being controlled by Izu. It just means I am submitting to Izu. Do you understand me? Praise the Lord. And you see, that part of submission, it's because I have given Izu the power to do what? To will his will over what? My life. Now, Izu will not have that power if I don't give him what? That power. Praise the Lord. Follow me closely. Praise the Lord. Now, because I want to make us understand why most times we don't get strengthened. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to go back to the very beginning where, where it all started. Now, God gave man the power of dominion. Dominion can be equated to the power of what? Will. To do and not to do. Dominion can be equated to, okay, dominate, rule. Now, a king's will is the rule, true or false. Now, if the king says today, I want this to happen, that is what the king wills. And that is what happens. Praise the Lord. True of us. Now, God gave us, he said, Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, he said, the Lord placed man in the garden of Eden to tend and to watch over it. But the Lord warned him, you may freely eat the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. And the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is just right for him. Now, understand that that was not God and man's decision. That was just what? God's decision. Now, why was it easy? If we go down, he said, okay. And man, so the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to man to see what he would call them. And man chose a name for each one. And he gave names to all the livestock, all the birds of the sky, and all the wild animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord caused man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord took out one of man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this is one of the bone of my bones. And the flesh of my flesh, she will be called what woman because she was taken away from me. She was taken from me. 
This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and they are united unto one. Okay, now the okay, we are not going into the part. Praise the Lord. Now, what am I trying to say? God, favor this here. Come up, come up, come up, come up quickly. God had a will. God did not discuss with Adam that Adam, you need a helpmate. God and man's will was what intertwined. Now it's just like favor now. I, you have the key to my room, right? Okay. Who doesn't know that myself and Philip we are close? Please. Okay. Praise God. So, now, whatever, it's just like assuming I was acting the place of God and she was acting the place of man. Whatever favor did was pleasing to me. Whatever I did was pleasing to who? Favor. Now, if I scatter favor's hair, don't worry, I won't scatter your hair. It will, she will understand that there is a reason why I scattered her hair. Do you understand? She won't question, why will you scatter my hair? Praise the Lord. She will not say, what gave you the audacity to do what? Scatter my hair. Why? We have an invincible what? Understanding. An understanding that cannot be explained. It's like you were taken out of me. So automatically you are an extension of who I am. Um, now, because of that, favor can do what will please me, and I can do what will please favor without any questions or arguments being on the line. That was the kind of relationship God had with man. Now, go and sit down. Now, chapter 3. <laughs> Follow me closely. Do you know one very powerful thing the devil, when the devil wants to kill or to steal from you? It first of all steals the will of God away from your heart. The devil was the, okay, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals. The Lord God made, Genesis 3, the Lord, please look into your Bible. The Lord God one made, the Lord God made, one day he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now, the devil did not ask the woman, did God say you should not eat the fruit of knowledge of good and evil? No. The devil asked the woman, did God really say you should not eat of any of the fruits in the garden? I don't know if you are picturing the whole thing. Now, God told man, you see, that section of the garden, do not eat. You can eat from all this part of the hall. Example, I come in and say, everybody, that section of the hall, don't sit. But you can sit anywhere here. God knew the reason why he said, do not sit there. And somebody just, perpetual just come inside and say, did she really say we should not enter the hall and sit down? Follow me closely. The devil did not ask, did God really say you should not eat from the fruit of knowledge and evil, of good and evil? The devil said, did God really say you should not eat from any of the fruits? Now, when the devil wants to question God's will for your life, he will not go directly to the will. He will generalize it. And he will leave you in the midst of it confused. And you will not be the one questioning the will of God. He only pushes you into the mirage. Did God really say, are you sure this is God's will for you? And you'll be like, he was, he's not going to point out and say, if the will of God for Izu is not to marry Esther. The devil will not, or if the will of God for Izu is to marry Esther. The devil will come and say, did God, or no, is not to marry Esther. The devil will come and say, did God really say you should not marry anybody in church on the rock? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Follow me. He will not say, did God really say you should not marry Esther? Now, in church on the rock, he has set you into a kind of confusion. Because there are a lot of women in what? Church on the rock. He did not go straight to the point. Because the devil is never a straightforward being. He only launches you into the confusion. And he leaves you to whine and dine and decide for yourself. And that was what he did to Eve. And Eve answered and said, of course we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden. And you take a picture and say, of course, she did not say we should not sit down in the hall. She just said we should not sit down at that part of the hall. And what did the, what did the devil say? The, devil, the, 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 the snake said, you won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Now, when the devil successfully confuses you, 
you will not be able to pinpoint the will of God again for your life. You will not be able to distinguish between what God's will is, what your will is, and what the devil is propagating you into. That was the downfall of man. She reasoned. She, she, she remeditated on God's word. Now let me make you understand something. If God has willed, he will not go back to re-will. If God has given you and said, this is my will for your life, nothing will make him go back to rethink of the will he has spoken. The mistake we Christians make today is, after God has given you his will, the devil comes, throw in confusion, and when you are confused, he gives you a suggestion that is far away from God's will, and what happens? You begin to do what? Be more confused. And the devil's voice begins to sound alike, like the voice of God. But there is a reason why God did not want them to eat the fruits. There is a reason why Chi does not want you to sit at that corner of the, of the hall. What if those seats there are bad? What if? And the will of God will never take you to where the grace of God will not sustain you. Now, the reason why you are not strengthened by God's will is because the grace of God is not with you. Because you are living your will and not God's will. You paint your will. You make it look good. You meditate and you speak to yourself every morning and you say, that is God's will. Truth, God can never change his will because of you. Never. His will remains the same. The moment he starts changing, changing his will, he will no longer be God. Praise the Lord. So most times, the reason why in that situation you don't receive strengthening is because you are not even in the will of God. You are far away from it. And how can you pray for my will when you are not doing, well, how can you pray for my grace to help when you are not doing what I want you to do? Please, how many of you here have, de have your parents dealt with? Your father asks you, or your mother asks you, go and sweep and wash the plates. And you don't do it. And you now come and meet them, mommy, give me money to buy biscuits. Please, how many of them gives you the money to buy biscuits? How many? If you want your parents to buy you one new clothes and shoe, what do you do? You do what they want. They like. So what makes God different? What makes him different? After all, we are made in his what? Image and what? Likeness. So the same way you would want me to do what you will, as in you want me to do something. If you ask me, oh, chick, come and help me cook. Uh, da, 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 and I say, I cannot. You know, no matter how much you love me, if I come and meet you, you will still have it in your mind that you that I asked to help me to cook and you did not help me to cook. That's humans for you. Not talk of you. You when you are out of the will of God, you cut yourself out and you expect God to follow you into the dunk hill that He's saving you from. You don't know why God's will is not towards that side for you. Benedict is having a red hair on her head. It's because God wants it like that. Don't fix a red hair because Benedict has a red hair. Know God's will for your life and live in it. Open to the book of Romans, please. Romans chapter 8. Okay, hold on before we go to Romans. Now, after, <laughs> after man had already, okay, then we all know that Eve God did what? Ate the fruit and gave to her loving, loving, loving husband. And if you go back again and you go to the book of that same Genesis chapter 3, we go back to um, from verse 11. It said, who told you you were naked? This was God talking. It's like, Favor, how did you know? Like me talking to Favor. Favor, how dare you do that kind of a thing? Who told you? And Favor is like, and I ask you, have you done what I asked you not to do? If you don't eat strawberries or if you don't eat grapes, your, your tongue will not be red. Favor, don't ever eat grapes. They are not good for you. And Favor now comes to me and says, my tongue is red. How did you know your tongue was red? 
did you eat what I asked you not to eat? How did you know there was danger there? Did you go to where I asked you not to go to? How did you know that this thing was going to bring death? Some of you will go to God in prayers with all your problems. Most of those problems, God did not plan them for you. You brought them to yourself. And God asked me, how did you know? Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? And the man replied, it was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit and I ate. For the first time, man blamed God. For the first time, man was not on the same page with God. Why? Sin. Man's will and God's will became what? Separated. And that was where sin came. And that was, that's what God, sin can do. Separating your will from the will of God. Sin. That's just the, that's just the aim of sin. Separating your will from God's will. That's all. Because when you have the will of God working in your life, you and God are on what? The same page. You can go to God and challenge him by his word. That is when faith can be put to play. That is when you can believe in God's word. But why can't you use the word of God today? Because you are not working in line with God's will. Or even if you use it, that's what the Bible means by praying what? At least, not praying right. You don't pray according to the will of God. You expect God. And God will look at you like, go back to where my will is. There, I have enough grace to do what? Sustain you. Go back to where my will is for your life. There, you will find more than enough grace to do what? Keep you going. Some of us will never, it's not a cause. You might never be blessed in life. It's not a cross. Why? Because you will never want to walk in God's will. God's blessings follow those that walk in his will. That's the truth about life. And you know one funny thing about God's will? You don't struggle. You know what it means for... Yes, blessing, blessing, come out. Now, it's, first of all, it is God's will that I handed over to blessing in praise and worship. Second of all, it is my will that blessing takes what over me. Now, even if blessing is a praise and worship leader right now, and anybody wants to come and say, hey, blessing, why are you doing like this? You first of all face me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why? Because I am supporting who? Blessing. It is God's will I handed over to blessing, yes. But I'm putting it in the sense of, okay, I handed over to blessing. I know that she's the one I'm meant to hand over to. Now, if you question blessing, you automatically question who? Praise the Lord. If you question blessing's ability to be a leader, you're automatically questioning who? Me. Because you're trying to make me feel that I don't know what I am doing. And I will try as much as I can to make sure that blessing succeeds in what she is doing. Why? Because anything that happens to blessing automatically affects who? Me. That's the way it is when it's with God. Let's sit down. When you are in God's will, anything that wants to happen to you must pass through God. When you are in line with the will of God, God is not going to allow anything to just happen to you. Why? It is in his will. He knows it's going to happen. He already knows. So it's already a set down thing. Before I came to Ukraine, I went to Unibet. I went to Ghana. I came to Ukraine. And I knew that this place was God's will for me. So even when all the whole blah, 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 hey, God, God, I said, be still. You cannot hear God's voice in the wrong location. You cannot hear God's voice in the wrong place. If he has not called you out into the wilderness and you find yourself in the wilderness, you'll be consumed by wild beasts. If he has not called you out into the ocean and you find yourself in the ocean, the ocean will do what? Drown you. If he has not called you into the fire and you go through the fire, it will do what? It will do what? But when he calls you into the fire, you walk into the fire majestically knowing that he is the God that created the fire and that you become invincible to the fire. Even 
though, when you are in God's will, that is when you can say, even though he allows me to walk through the valley of what? The shadows of what? Death. I will fear what? No evil. In God's will, that is when you can say that. And in God's will, the right words always come at the right time. There are some of us that keep on fasting, bind. You are binding demons that are not there. And God is saying, my people perish because of what? Lack of knowledge. You are perishing. You are binding a devil that is not there. If I am not here and you are saying, chi, get out of this hall. Get out of this hall. No chi will get out. Because there is no chi there in the first place. You look mad. Some of us are spiritually looking mad. You look mad spiritually. And God is saying, no, just go back to my will. Come back to the place where you and I remains one. Where our thoughts are intertwined. Where you can know who I am through my word. And exhibit my word in your life. And see me take you back to where I have willed you to be. Some of us, we think life is a drama. We want to play the scripts. You want to look good. Act. You are wasting your life. You are wasting your life. Go back to God's will and receive strength. Because the will of God comes with strength. Open the book of Romans chapter 8. Praise the Lord. You know, it's very painful that some of us Christians, you see, you know why the children of the world they excel more than us. They are with our wealth. We don't know. Because we, we receive true obedience. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Let me try to be fast because I have points to give. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we did not know what to pray, what God wants us to pray. Now, Follow me closely. The Holy Spirit helps us in our what? Weaknesses. For example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with what? With groundings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows, the Spirit, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony. Somebody say harmony. In harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything. Now, by the time the Lord, the Holy Spirit in you, when you, now, this is the way it goes. You as a human being, you go back to the cross. You give your life to him. And the Holy Spirit begins to teach you. He teaches you in line with God's will. Now, when you are there, he begins to pray for you in line with God's will. Now, by the time he starts praying for you in line with God's will, what happens? He said, for all things we do what? Work together for your good. It's a principle. That we provoke the promise. Now, if all things are not working together for your good, the Bible did not say everything will be sweet, rosy, charming, loving. He said all things, no matter what, we do what? Work together for what? Your good. In as much as the Holy Spirit is there praying in line with what? In line with what? God's will. So it's a principle. Go back to the Holy Spirit. Go back to the word of God and find yourself again in God's will. And let me now make you understand something. Have you seen husband and wife that look alike? <laughs> if you look at husband and wife that look alike, there's this beautiful thing about their marriage. Their, their marriage look, is sweet. They agree. You know that some parents that they don't even need to talk. It, once the father has said it, the mother, if you go and meet the mother, the mother says, ah, that's what daddy said. Ah, no problem, that's it now. If you go and meet the mother, that's what daddy, mother, nah, daddy will say, ah, that's what mommy said. Ah, no problem now. That's it now. They don't need to argue, but there are some. <laughs> if you even see them, it's like, <laughs> you use chain and padlock to padlock them on that boat. What makes them, like, have that, you know, sweetening relationship? Their will has become what? One. One will. They're not confused. And because of that, you know, when your will becomes with, the same with, one pe with somebody else, you discover that it is only love that can make that happen. And you can't love God if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Sorry. You can't even love yourself. If we so love ourselves, why do you kill yourself? Why do people kill themselves? 
Why do people commit suicide? If the so-called love that you say you have for yourself, even it takes only God to make you love yourself. There's sometimes that you look at yourself, ah, why am I like this? Why am I like this? Why? You can't love yourself if God does not bring out the beauty from you. So if you can't even love yourself, how much more love a God that you cannot see? Or love your neighbor as yourself? How is it possible? The will of God. Praise the Lord. And say, all things work together in accordance to the <laughs> to those that love God who are called according to his purpose. See, when you love God, see, God loves all of us. That's just the truth. If you like, agree. If you like, disagree. If you like, receive. If you like, refuse. He loves you. So now, all things will begin to work together when you begin to do what? Love God. Simple principle. And you cannot love God if you don't have a relationship with who? The Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is who? The, the being that was comforts, that strengthens, that imbibes, that do what? Revives, that rescues, that redeems, that saves. He makes you remember that Jesus loves you so much. Pour out the love of the Father upon your life. How can you say you love your neighbor? Or how can you say you love God when you don't even love your neighbor? And how can you love your neighbor when you don't love yourself? Praise the Lord. What, verse 31 now, the same chapter. What shall we say about such wonderful things as this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare his own son, but gave him all up. Won't he also give us everything? When you are in God's will, God is for who? You. Automatically. You see this Bible passage here? It's actually in line. First of all, the Holy Spirit prays you into what? God's will. Then, everything begins to work in line for you. Now, the Bible is not telling you that, see, when God is, in, when everything is working in line for you, that means God is for you. Now, if God is for you, please, who can stand against you? Simple. When you are praying, you are praying with the confidence that God, I received a word from you that this is your will. And you see, that's why I, I started with the Bible verse I said, the devil will first of all do what? Confuse you. Make you feel like that's not God's will for you. Don't even go there. But God is not saying, first of all, that the only thing that keeps you in line with God's will is the Holy Ghost. Because he keeps on praying you into the will of God. He intercedes for you. When you are weak, he prays for you into the very will of God. And you just discover that let God's will be what done. You don't struggle with the will of God anymore. Praise the Lord. Oh, well, God brings you to zap to, to be, you know, and you decide to yuri yuri away. Yuri yuri your time. Yuri yuri. Yuri yuri. And God is like, Come, I didn't bring you here to do this. I brought you here for this purpose. And you say, God, hold your peace. Hold your peace. And you are going. And when you go there now and you meet expulsion, deportation, you say, ah, God. That's when you remember that there's fasting and prayer three days you want to meet. That's when you remember that God is God. You come here on Friday and um, Thursday a prayer marathon. You'll be the first person in your cell group. Why? Because they want to deport you. See your life. But if you had remained in the will of God, you wouldn't have gotten to the point of deportation. I'm an example. If it's school fees, they would have pursued me away since. But God has been faithful. God has been faithful. So, see, there's nothing that God cannot do. If it's atrabodka, <laughs> when I had this surgery, cardiac surgery, my first semester, I would have had piled up of atrabodka. But God, <laughs> in his infinite mercy, gave them a letter that I don't come to class, but they don't give me absence. See, walk in God's will and enjoy the privileges. And stop praying prayers that God is not asking you to pray. Pray so that you have time to intercede for other people. Stop wasting your time. It's painful when the children of God perish because of lack of ignorance. Because of ignorance. Not lack of ignorance. Because of ignorance and lack of knowledge. You lack knowledge. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Of us, we don't apply wisdom. Don't use wisdom. 
You are not wise. Children of the world are wiser than you. You are always praying for your finances. Once money just lands, you don't think of paying your tithes. You carry everything like that. Boom. You go to Avora. You shop. You buy Gucci. You buy um, Louis Vuitton. Abi, what do you call it? You buy Balenciaga. You buy, you buy iPhone, Apple, latest. You are saving money to buy a ride and you cannot, that you cannot fuel. You cannot put gas in. You cannot pay your tithe. To remove that, have you ever wondered why it's difficult to remove tithe? How many of you know it's very difficult to remove your tithe? How many of you know that? Tithe payers know. Tithe payers know. It's difficult. Because it's like, that's more. It's, <laughs> I can't pay next time. I won't pay double. No, pay it now. Don't pay your tithe. Once you say, I want to buy virgin hair. 100% Brazilian, full frontal, 360 degree. Women, fix your nail, Peter Studio. Peter's is even on. Then you now see different discounts. Discount now. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> fix your lashes. With your tights. You fix your lashes and paint your nails. Your tights is on your nails. Nails that will fall off. Lashes that will fall off. You fix. You use, you are carrying your tights on your lashes. We are in Balenciaga that can, who say designers know this point, and then they even spoil a pass. They just have me. Carry iPhone that you drop inside water. They say waterproof. God will make it less waterproof. You're not a serious person. You don't obey, and you keep on praying, God, my finances will blow some fire. Hey, every demon. And then he's like, come, why are you dragging me into something. You are not obeying simple principles. You are not going in line with the will of God. And you want God to work for you. How is that possible? And when you see people flourishing, people that pay their tithe flourishing, you start thinking, eh, now wow. Now only you, when they are giving testimony, your stomach will start biting. You see, you, it's not end up biting, you will purge. You are not a serious person. I'm not cursing you, I'm telling you the truth. If people that pay the sacrifices of obeying the will of God comes out here to give testimony and you get jealous and say, wait till they worry that one. Now show this up. You, it's no end that wait till they worry that one. You will purge. Start obeying God's will and you start seeing results in your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, obey God's will. Obey God's will. Fall in line with his will and see his grace work for you. I am grace personified. I'm not afraid to say it anywhere. Anything that happens to you happens because God willed it to for a greater result that you don't even understand. So when you go through that challenge, if you, are, if you want to be strengthened by God, fall into his will and see. Test him and see if he won't stand for you. He has never failed anyone that has trusted in his will. And he won't get to your turn and change. You won't get to your turn and change. You question God. God, why? Why did you bring me to that family? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? That is where he wants you to be. Stop asking him questions. And ask him, how can I make it what? Better. The problem we have is we ask the wrong questions all the time. Some of us, if God gives us three short banker with chance to get answers, the kind of foolish questions we'll be asking. God, why did I eat spaghetti this morning? He will answer you. God, why did I have this black jacket? He will answer you. Tell you that used to ask reasonable questions. Time is going. Life is going. Everything is going. Everything is going. You have to ask him. Ask him. And he's answering you. Praise the Lord. Point one. As a food, God gives us strength to move forward. John chapter 4 verse 31 to 30. John chapter 4 verse 31 to 34. Somebody should open to the book of John. Don't worry, I'm timing it. Don't be scared. John 4, verse 31. Meanwhile, to 34. Meanwhile, the disciples were arguing, were arguing Jesus. Rabbi, eat something. Jesus replied, I have a food 
a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of who? God, who sent me, and from finishing his work. Time to chop. It was time to pray. The will of God for you to fast. Say, Prince, we wake up. Pray for Sister Chidima. Prince, uh-uh. Why should I pray for Chi? Chi can pray for herself. Ah, uh-uh, it's not Chi. You don't know why God is asking you to pray for me. I want to chop today. Oh, ah, after I've already planned that, I'm going to go and buy food from uh, Amanda's kitchen or from Beverly Tasty Cuisine. Don't go out with makeup today. Uh uh-uh. Today is my birthday. I'm going to slay. You've already booked Timas Crafts. And maybe there's a reason why God did not want you to go out with makeup. And you just go and meet Tima. Slay me, baby. And you go out. And maybe they mistake you for something else. You know, nowadays, makeup can make you look like someone else. <laughs> can make you look exactly like somebody else. You know, maybe they are looking for somebody else. Somebody, I'm draw, uh, higher killers come to a place and they are looking for, <laughs> looking for somebody else. And ultimately, unfortunately for you that day, they made you up looking like that same person or like the picture they have of the person. Then you end your life with your own hand because you wanted to slay. And God said, don't go out with makeup. I said, no, today's my bad. I'm going to slay. You're going to slay. You slay to your death. After all, you've been slayed already. You're going to slay. Don't wear these designers that you bought today. Oh, no. Somebody must have stolen something somewhere else. You just happen to be at the right place at the right time. Bam. Now you still have exactly the same thing. Maybe the sign the person has is the same that you have on your shoe. <laughs> God, don't catch you. Listen to God's will. Even pertain to your dressing too. If God say don't wear red lipstick, don't wear Beverly is laughing. I don't know why she's laughing. Beverly and her roommates. Look at them. <laughs> Say, don't marry that brother. One brother is toasting you like a like, uh, uh, toaster. Fried egg with bread. Don't do it. No. It's the honey in my pie. It's the sugar in my tea. It's the one that I sit on my brain. I 